welcome to this edition of Essential News. I'm Eden Jones. And I'm Jackson Rowbottom. We start with an update on the massive fire that ripped through an empty five-story apartment complex. The fire happened in northwest Oklahoma City near northwest 63rd and Western. You can see in the video and photos here taken last night that the fire was not letting up. Firefighters were actively working the scene for more than 14 hours. Fire officials say that the building was still under construction and no injuries were reported. That's right, New Central's Shannon Schwa is live on the scene to give us an update from the fire. Shannon, what can you tell us? Thanks, Jackson. We're here at the Canton Apartments on 1100th block of Northwest 63rd Street. As many people have already heard, the fire broke out at around 7.55 last night. Um, according to the Oklahoma City Fire Department's Twitter, um, the possible cause of this fire is a rubberized, move, rubberized roofing material that does not go out with water. Um, parts of the building have already collapsed throughout OKC Fire Department's efforts to put out the fire this evening, as you can see here. Well, the story is still developing, but U Central is going to keep you updated. Um, this is Shannon Chua, back to you at the desk. Thank you very much, Shannon. And the results are in for last night's election. OKC Mayor David Holt was re-elected, winning 50% of the vote over three challengers. Holt secured his re-election to a four-year term without a runoff. Well, the weather has been very beautiful these past couple of days on campus. That is right. And CJ has more for us on the warm weather. CJ, what can you tell us? Give us a look at the first weather. That's right, Jackson and Eden. It has been a beautiful couple of days here on campus. However, if you go outside right about now, you'll probably notice that it is pretty gusty out right now. However, we are feeling pretty, pretty good outside here in Edmond right now, sitting at about 68 degrees with mostly sunny skies. The winds, however, blow into the west at about 15 miles per hour. We could see some gusts up to 20 to 25 miles per hour, so be careful of that. Uh, the humidity feeling pretty nice out there today with uh, the temperature feeling at about 66 degrees. Let's go ahead and check our weather headlines for this week. Week. Uh, we're going to have some warmer temperatures heading into this week, so that's a definitely a plus from the coldness we saw last week. Uh, we're also going to see the winds start to pick up a lot more as we start to head into the weekend. Well, we'll see on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, we're going to see that wind start to pick up. And uh, the good news for all of you out there who are uh, looking for no more storms, we are going to see our next storm system move in until next week. Guys, that's all we have for weather right now. We'll come back here in a little bit with more. Thank you, CJ. Now let's take a look at UCO's COVID numbers today. The University of Central Oklahoma is currently at level two operations and is facing 90 active cases. And currently there have been over 2,000 recoveries since the beginning of last semester. And as for Oklahoma COVID numbers, the state of Oklahoma currently has nearly 1,700 new cases. Oklahoma has over 39,000 active cases and there are 330 total ICU hospitalizations right now. Yes, and U Central's own Christopher Craig has a report on how COVID has impacted Oklahoma's teachers. And here's what he found. It's a sound that brings back memories, with recorders being a very big part of elementary school education. But for music teacher Christy Craig, it's becoming harder and harder to teach her kids. Well, I've had to cover a lot of my colleagues' classes. Um, they've doubled up. Sometimes uh, we have extra kids in a class. So I've had to cover for, for my colleagues. Nakoma Park Intermediate is just one of many schools across the state drowning in teacher shortages, with some teachers stepping up to the plate in order to help their colleagues cover classes. Um, I am trying to find subs at all hours of the night, day. Um, we have where we have days that we don't have any subs, that we're having teachers split classes. We are working night and day trying to fill positions. I've gone into other rooms and I have um, subbed in there, so it takes away from my teaching my own classes. Teachers all across the state, just like the ones here at Nakoma Park Intermediate, have been facing the same problems due to the teacher shortages. However, some teachers believe that there may be more reasons to it than COVID. Pay. Um, pay, COVID. Those would be the top reasons. But I think a respect would help, and I also think better pay would help. Lack of respect for teachers. Why would anyone want to go in to be in a teacher if there are such lack of respect? You know, I'm nearing the end of my career, but beginning teachers really need an incentive to come into this as a, as a career field and not just a stepping stone to something else. 
In the 2020 school year, the state of Oklahoma had seen a 19% turnover rate in the field of education. Teachers are arguing that in order to make a significant change, they simply need more. They're going to have to pay them. They're going to pay them what they're worth. As a parent, my children um, are in classes that sometimes they don't even have a teacher. The teachers feel like they're drowning, and I, I, right there with them. When you have so many kids that are in a class because they don't have teachers, um, you, you really need that smaller class size so you can give them the individualized attention they really need. On January 18th, Governor Stitt issued an executive order that aimed to combat the shortage, allowing state employees to fill in as substitute teachers. Yeah, These educators teacher. offered their input. I would love to see them come spend a day in the day of a teacher. They're talking the talk, but they're not walking the walk. And we need our legislators to, you know, not just talk about it, but actually vote and, you know, help us as educators. Our jobs are not a piece of cake. It's not, oh, well, you sit and play all day long with kids. There's a lot of work to it. And I think if they did come in and fill in, they would have a total new respect for what teachers do and deal with daily. From Nakoma Park, Oklahoma, I'm CJ Craig, U Central News. Thank you, CJ. In Oklahoma, Attorney General John O'Connor said Tuesday that his office has been found has found no legal basis for medical boards to discipline doctors for prescribing ivermectin or hydroxychloroquine to treat no COVID-19. The FDA has approved ivermectin for use by people and animals for some parasitic worms, head lice, and skin conditions. However, the FDA has not approved its used to treat or prevent COVID-19 in humans. Also, no scientific studies have found the anti-malaria drug hydroxychloroquine effective in preventing or treating COVID-19. O'Connor said in a statement, I stand behind doctors who believe it is in their patients' best interests to receive ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine. U.S. forces have started arriving in Poland to help out with the Russia-Ukraine situation. The White House has approved a plan for the nearly 2,000 troops to help Americans who might try to leave Ukraine if Russia invades. Officials say U.S. forces are not currently authorized to enter Ukraine itself. There are no plans for them to conduct an evacuation operation either. Instead, they will set up a processing area and temporary shelters near Poland's border with Ukraine. State Department officials have urged Americans to leave Ukraine. And with all of these developments coming out of the Ukraine situation, U Central's Mari Brown spoke with a UCO professor for more insight. Russia sees Ukraine as a country that is within its, what it perceives to be its legitimate sphere of influence, and they want to protect that, uh, and they want to keep the Ukrainians from, from, in a sense, going to the other side. Lauren Gatch is a professor of political science here at UCO. We asked him last Friday about the current conflict in Ukraine. He described the situation in terms of a standoff. Uh, we are in a standoff over whether Ukraine is going to be um, is going to uh, continue to be more of a European country under in a European sphere of influence, a member of European institutions, and perhaps also the um, North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Does Russia have a point? Gatch explained the situation from both the Russian and European perspectives. Gatch also explained the concerns of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, or NATO, the organization tasked with possibly coming to the aid of Ukraine. NATO is interested in, um, in, in preventing any kind of Russian designs upon Ukraine as being a preliminary to, to, to putting further pressure upon members of the European, uh, of, the, um, of, the, um, of the NATO alliance that are in Eastern Europe and, and then the Baltics. That is, that's the real line that the, Na that the NATO alliance has to defend. With so much at stake, what is the best possible outcome in the current standoff? Well, the best case is that um, both sides have, um, have the, um, the, the, the freedom to, to stand down without being humiliated. With that in mind, we also asked Getch what he thought would be the best outcome for Ukraine. The, the best um, scenario is if there's some kind of a mutual understanding that will lead to the treatment of Ukraine as a kind of neutral buffer state with a certain amount of independence and a certain ability to determine what's going on within their own borders. 
And finally, we asked how concerned should we here at UCO be about the recent decision by the Defense Department to place 8,500 troops on a heightened state of readiness? Uh, there is no particular um, risk to any person who lives in Oklahoma. There is no, there's no deployment that we, that, that we, um, we're not wishing, we're not seeing off any of our, 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 um, uh, our young men and women into combat. It from UCO campus in Edmond, Mari Blair, New Central News. Thanks, Mari. As work continues on the $4.5 million improvements project at the intersection of 2nd Street and Bryant Avenue, traffic will finally start to clear up Saturday morning. East-west traffic will be moved from the lanes currently available, those on the north side of 2nd Street that were in use while work was being done, to lanes that have been completed on the south side of 2nd Street and ready for public use. The lanes will be restriped and adjustments to the traffic signal heads will begin the Friday night to accommodate the shifting of available lanes the following morning. However, Saturday morning there will be no left turn available from westbound 2nd Street onto southbound Bryant Avenue and no left turn available from northbound Bryant onto westbound 2nd Street. That's right, and coming up, UCO's Office of Inclusive Community and the Office of Diversity and Inclusion are hosting a workshop next week. We have the details on that still ahead. Don't go anywhere. And when we come back, we'll go ahead and take a look at the weather that you can expect coming for the next week. So stay tuned. supposed to save the whole world. You can't think about saving the world. You have to think about saving one person. Because of you, someone's entire life can change. You don't have to be a superhero to have a positive impact. Friends? Friends. Hey, Bobo. Do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. back to you central news in the fall of 2020 uco announced its adoption of and establishment of a university-wide land acknowledgement policy the land acknowledgement policy recognizes sovereign nations on whose land uco occupies as a result of colonization the land acknowledgement website has more information regarding critical reflection prompts for the classroom strategies on working with indigenous community partners links to interactive maps of native lands and other educational resources. The UCO Office of Inclusive Community and the Office of Diversity and Inclusion will host land acknowledgement workshop on Monday, February 14th from 3 to 3.45 p.m. via Zoom to discuss how to utilize the land acknowledgement along with a Q&A. And now we're gonna check in with CJ to see what to expect with the weather. Yep, CJ, what do you have for us over there?
Well, thank you guys. Uh, we can expect to have a really, really nice uh, weekend and week coming up with warmer temperatures. Uh, we're definitely going to see some gusty winds start to pick up as we go into that weekend. Uh, but the good news, however, is we aren't going to see any more storms until next week. So this week is looking pretty clear, especially for Super Bowl Sunday. Let's go ahead and check around current conditions around the state here. Uh, it's sitting about six, uh, mid 60s around the state down there in Alta 67, Guymon 63, 65 here in the metro area. So it's feeling pretty, pretty nice out there right now. Let's go ahead and check tonight's forecast. Uh, we're going to have a low of 39 degrees, partly cloudy skies. Uh, so it's going to be a little bit cold out there. So if you're out this evening, make sure you have a jacket prepared. Uh, we're going to see those winds start to die down. They're going to uh, they're still going to be blowing at a west uh, at about five to 10 miles an hour, but they are going to come down and we're not going to see as many gusts going into this evening. Uh, the humidity as well, it's going to uh, spike up a little bit up to 50%, not too, too bad. However, we don't have a rain chance this evening. Let's go ahead and check around the lows for this state. Uh, as we see in Oklahoma City sitting at about 39 degrees. Guyman up there at 28 degrees below freezing. Wow, feeling pretty cold up there in the panhandle, especially down in southern Oklahoma, uh, 36 in Altus, 36 in Ardmore, 37 in Ida Bell. Let's go ahead and check tomorrow's temperatures around the state. Still feeling about the same, sitting at about 60 degrees around the state. Uh, Oklahoma City sitting at about 61, Guyman 59, Woodward 59. Uh, the southern part of the state, you guys are going to feel a little bit more warm than the rest of the state. However, that isn't going to last very long as we start to move into the week. Uh, let's go ahead and check today, uh, tomorrow's forecast here for Edmond. At about 7 a.m. we're going to have a nice cool 40 degree weather uh, sitting with sunny skies out there. It's going to be a nice morning tomorrow morning. Uh, and then coming into noon we're going to start to see those winds pick up uh, as the clouds start to roll into tomorrow afternoon. Uh, sitting about 55 degrees. And then 7 p.m. the temperature is going to keep coming up sitting at about 56 degrees with clear skies. Let's go ahead and check our seven day forecast uh, as we look uh, tomorrow, we're going to see the temperature start to come down a little bit and then pick right back up going into Friday. Friday, however, that's the best day we have to see those uh, strong wind gusts, those wind gusts that are up to 25 miles per hour, 30 miles an hour. That's really when we're going to start to see those wind gusts start to come into play. And as we can see, those wi that wind is going to start to bring that colder weather in on Saturday. We only have a high of 44. However, that temperature is going to come right back up on Sunday, coming right back to 60 degrees. And then as we go into the rest of the week, you can see pretty much more of the same. Guys, that's all we have for weather right now. Back to you at the desk. Thank you very much, CJ. And coming up, I will be bringing you an update on social media. Don't go anywhere. supposed to save the whole world. You can't think about saving the world. You have to think about saving one person. Because of you, someone's entire life can change. You don't have to be a superhero to have a positive impact. Friends? Friends. Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Welcome back to U Central News, and this is your social media update. 
LucasArts' latest installment of the Star Wars series, The Book of Boba Fett, is now streaming all episodes. The season finale for the series dropped this morning, completing the series with seven episodes available to watch. The story follows feared bounty hunter Boba Fett and his exploits on the desert planet Tatooine. Go enjoy the suspense and excitement of the latest Star Wars story. And something new in the video game community, Apex Legends Season 12 is now live. The Battle Royale first-person shooter by Respawn Entertainment dropped their 19th character, Legend Mad Maggie, and the Season 12 Battle Pass to go with it, and it returned to a formerly playable map, Olympus, which has been updated, as well as a rebalancing to other legends playable in the game. You can play that game on PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo Switch, and PC. Also, a very happy birthday to actor Tom Hiddleston. The English actor, best known for his work in the Marvel Cinematic Universe as the Asgardian god of mischief, Loki, turns 41 today. And fans have taken to Twitter and Facebook wishing the best for him in his 41st year. And from us here at UCO, we wish him a happy birthday as well. And also a happy National Pizza Day to all the pizza fans out there. Twitter is blowing up with pictures of pizza and pizza-related memes in response to it being National Pizza Day. The pizza parlors are responding with deals all over the country. And here in Oklahoma, local Domino's pizza shops are offering deals for take-home any two medium pizzas, bread twists, salads, pasta, stuffed cheesy bread, and more for just $5.99 each. Go enjoy those deals and pizzas before they're gone. And well, that's going to do it for us today. Make sure to follow us on social media so you don't miss out on anything U Central News. Give us a follow on Twitter at U Central Media. Like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash U Central. I hope you all have a great day. We're going to toss it back to Eden at the desk. What do we have coming up? Thanks, Jackson. We'll have more with sports after this. supposed to save the whole world. You can't think about saving the world. You have to think about saving one person. Because of you, someone's entire life can change. You don't have to be a superhero to have a positive impact. Friends? Friends. Hey, Bobo. Do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Take naps? I couldn't tell you. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! Sports fans, I hope y'all's Wednesday has been wild and wacky in a good way. I'm Devin Bajek, here to give you all your sport news. First, I'd like to st start off by shining some light on your UCO softball team. I had the chance to interview senior infielder Taryn Dubler and be around the team. The UCO softball team kicks off the season February 3rd at the Arkansas Tech Invitational. After a 36-14 season a year ago, this year's team has a new set of goals. So some of our team goals are um, being conference champs and making a good run in postseason. A new year means a new team identity for the Chos. We have more leadership, 
we've had a lot of younger girls come in and step up and fill a lot of roles. Um, and I think that we also have a consistency. The level of excitement for this team to get back on the diamond is visible. I'm just excited to get out there and get going. We've been practicing, we've been going really hard every day. Um, we've had little off days, but that's okay because we've been out here getting better and um, I'm just ready to see us all together on the field um, as one playing together instead of competing against one another. One another. I think that um, it's gonna be an exciting year. The road will be tough to the brutal MIAA, but the team wouldn't have it any other way. As you see in our conference, you take it day by day, and everyone has a chance to win, and so you just got to keep going and um, keep fighting, and no play is going to be easy. From Edmond, Oklahoma, this is Devin Bajek, U Central News. The girls look to improve to 4-2 and two this Friday at home versus Midwestern State at 3.30. The Bronco baseball team, fresh off a victory versus in-state rival Southwestern Oklahoma State, 6-4, improved their record to 2-1 as they prepare to travel to Denver for a three-game series versus MSU Denver. The UCL, UCL men's basketball team suffered a 71-68 loss in a COVID makeup game yesterday against Missouri Western. The loss will drop UCO to 19-4 and, and out of a tie for first in the MIAA with Northwest Missouri. It is also, also the first loss on home court for UCL this season. UCL Golf finished fourth in the Houston Classic yesterday. Sophomore Evan Griffith tied for medalist honors before losing in a playoff. Griffin finished his final round with a 74, totaling three under for the tournament. That's going to be it for me. Back to Eden and Jackson at the desk. Thanks, Devin. And it looks like UCO is facing a murder mystery, mm -hmm. Eden. Yep, that's right. We'll have more on that after the break. Come out to play. Starting tomorrow, UCO's College of Fine Arts and Design is putting on a live production of Clue. It will be hosted in the Mitchell Hall Theater and will begin at 7.30 p.m. The show will be a classic whodunit that features the iconic characters from the board game and cult classic film, Scarlet, Plum, White, Green, Peacock, and Mustard. They scramble to try and find the murderer in Bo Body Mansion as the body count stacks up. Clue will keep you guessing until the very end. That's right. One last look to CJ for the weather. What, what, what can we expect to see, CJ? Well, that's right, guys. Uh, it's going to be a great weekend, especially for Super Bowl weekend, if you have any plans for that weekend. Let's go ahead and take a look at our seven-day forecast really quick. Uh, as you can see, on Friday, we're going to see a lot of wind on that day. That's our best chance for our windy day this week. And then that wind is going to also bring in some colder air on Saturday. It's going to drop the temperature down to 44. However, it's going to bounce right back up for Super Bowl Sunday. So if you have any plans for Super Bowl Sunday, it's going to be a nice, nice day outside. Guys, back to you at the desk. Speaking of Super Bowl Sunday, do you have any plans coming up for it? It's going to be a good game. I don't have plans, but something tells me it's going to be a really, really good game. I, I don't want to miss it. I think I think it will. I've heard arguments to go both ways for them. I'm just mm -hmm. going to be chilling at home with the family, yeah. just eating my chips and queso. Sounds like a fun time. It's going to be a great time. Mm -hmm. That's going to do it for us today on U Central News. I'm Jackson Robottom. I'm Eden Jones. Have Thank a good night. Have a great night.